Hello, I'm Chidem Aslan, Division Chief of IMF's Fiscal Affairs Department. I am delighted to welcome you to this preview of the IMF Summer School course titled Macroeconomics of Climate Change, Green Public Finance. Through this complimentary online course, you will gain insight into how countries can incorporate climate change considerations into their public financial management. By the end of the course, you will be able to identify the key connections between climate change challenges and public investment management, describe the climate PIMA tools and its practical applications in supporting the integration of climate change considerations in public investment management, define green PFM, discuss its role in fighting climate change using country examples, Identify crucial entry points for mainstreaming climate change throughout and beyond the budget cycle and understand key principles for implementing a green PFM reform strategy effectively. To enroll in the full Macroeconomics of Climate Change or MCCX course, kindly follow the link provided. If you have an interest in comprehending the intersection of macroeconomics and climate change, I hope you will join us. Infrastructure is key to economic growth and sustainable development. But climate change and natural disasters pose serious threats on infrastructure across key sectors, including transport, energy, water, and telecommunication. Climate change and natural disasters are already causing damage to infrastructure and disrupting services imposing billions of dollars of economic costs a year in low- and middle-income countries. At the same time, greenhouse gas emissions from existing and planned infrastructure around the world are estimated to be very large and growing. How countries plan and build their infrastructures now and going forward will determine success or failure of the Paris Agreement. A modern and well-functioning infrastructure has a truly transformative impact. Low-income countries, and emerging market economies have looming infrastructure needs to provide clean water, affordable and clean electricity, efficient and safe transportation, and reliable telecommunication services. Many advanced economies have aging infrastructure and see urgent needs for their upkeep and modernization. In terms of the magnitude of investment requirement, data tell us that investment needs to close the infrastructure gaps are large in all regions of the world. Countries need to ramp up public investments from the current trends and make sure that public investments are done efficiently to achieve their intended economic outcomes. Attaining sustainable development goals and getting on track to achieve the Paris Agreement call for significant public investment. About 4.5% of annual GDP is needed by 2030 for capital investments in developing countries, while about 2% of annual GDP is needed globally. And these investments have to be low carbon, as well as resilient to climate risks. Scaling up public investments in the context of limited fiscal space and high debt is challenging, but public investment that is efficient, green, and resilient has multiple benefits. It creates jobs, spurs economic growth, and improves the quality of life. It also stimulates much needed private sector investment and helps leverage other innovative financing instruments. All in all, climate responsive investment makes economic sense. It likely yields substantial net gains over the life of the infrastructure. To make public investment green and resilient, countries should incorporate climate change considerations into their public investment management systems. Doing so, contributes to improving the efficiency of public investment management. For instance, climate-smart public investment prevents infrastructure assets from being stranded in the future. Project prioritization process should also account for climate goals and risks, so that resources are well spent and achieve their intended economic and climate outcomes. One key question for the IMF is how do we work with countries and support them in integrating climate change considerations into public investment management? The Climate Public Investment Management Assessment, or Climate PIMA, focuses on the climate aspects of public investment management. 
it assesses five key public investment management institutions that are most critical to addressing climate challenges. The five institutions are climate aware planning, coordination between entities, project appraisal and selection, budgeting and portfolio management, and risk management. Countries have national and sectoral plans. The Climate Pima considers how the planning framework could be enhanced to integrate NDC or other climate objectives. In some countries, the project selection process does not include climate aspects. The framework suggests how project appraisal and selection can account for climate and transition risks. Certain public investment expenditures have significant climate implications. The Climate Pima helps countries think about identifying and tracking these expenditures. And it also helps consider how things can be improved so that public assets are well managed and major projects better executed in the context of growing climate risks. In addition, the Climate Pima assesses countries' capacity on other cross-cutting aspects, including legal framework, IT system, and staff capacity. Each institution of the Climate Pima consists of three dimensions, which reflect key features of the institution. Let's look at each Climate Pima institution in more detail. The first institution assesses the extent to which public investment planning factors in the need for climate adaptation and mitigation, as formulated in NDC or National Climate Strategy. In this context, the first dimension looks across national and sectoral public investment plans and evaluates whether these are consistent with NDC or other overarching climate strategies. If a country aims to achieve 100% renewable electricity generation, the investment plan in power infrastructure and networks should support this goal. Since climate risks are location-specific, the second dimension considers regulations related to spatial planning and construction and how they take into account impact-prone areas and climate hotspots. The third dimension assesses whether there is adequate guidance and support to government agencies on climate responsive planning, which typically requires a lot of technical capacity and complex methods. The second institution focuses on the need to adopt a whole-of-government approach. In addition to the central government, sub-national governments and public corporations play key roles in climate-related public investment. The three dimensions altogether ask whether decisions on climate-related public investment are coordinated across the central government, the general government, and the public sector. Resources need to be allocated to the right sectors and projects and be responsive to countries' climate goals. The third institution assesses whether climate considerations are integrated into project appraisal and selection processes. The first dimension checks whether climate-related analyses such as risk screening or emission accounting are conducted as part of the appraisal of major infrastructure projects. The second deals with public-private partnership and asks whether PPP framework appropriately addresses climate risks and challenges. The last dimension assesses project selection process and whether climate priorities are reflected in the selection criteria. The fourth institution considers how the government's portfolio of climate-related projects is managed, from budgeting to asset management. This is essential in the implementation phase of public investment. The three dimensions under this institution cover whether climate-related public investment expenditures are identified and reported, whether exposed reviews are conducted to help understand climate outcomes of public investment, and how the government's asset management policies and practices address climate-related risks. The fifth and final institution looks at how the government identifies and manages risk exposure associated with public investment that could be impacted by climate change and natural disasters. The first dimension asks whether the government prepares a national disaster risk management and response strategy. The second assesses whether the government has contingency financing mechanisms in place to manage climate and disaster risks. The third dimension checks whether the government conducts fiscal risk analysis that considers climate-related risks to public infrastructure assets. Hello, and welcome to this session on Green Public Financial Management, or Green PFM. 
In this video, we will be answering three questions. What is Green PFM? Why it matters? And how countries can successfully implement Green PFM reforms? So let's start with what is Green PFM. Green PFM is the integration of a climate-friendly perspective into PFM practices, systems and frameworks, especially the budget process, to promote fiscal policies that are responsive to climate and environmental concerns. Green PFM is not a PFM revolution. It does not require creating new and separate PFM systems. Green PFM is rather about adapting existing practices to make them more climate sensitive. So why does Green PFM matter? You may already have heard about how specific fiscal policies such as carbon taxation or low carbon infrastructure are key instruments in combating climate change. But in fact, every policy with a fiscal dimension adopted by government has a climate impact, be it direct or indirect. Caring about these impacts is critical for the success of a climate strategy. That is what Green PFM is about, making sure that climate change is taken into consideration at every step of fiscal and budget policies, from their design to their implementation, so as to ensure that they work for, not against, the achievement of climate objectives. For instance, how to ensure the coherence of the budget with green commitments? What guidance to the give line ministries on climate goals when they prepare their budgets? How to prepare a medium-term fiscal framework that considers revenue and spending implication of climate policies? Or what are the specific transparency requirements on climate-related matters? Despite the relevance of these questions, Green PFM practices are still rare in most countries. According to the results of an OECD survey in 2021, 60% of the OECD membership still do not implement any form of Green PFM. A 2021 World Bank report shows that only 19 countries worldwide have implemented a form of climate budget tagging. However, the momentum has been growing. For example, finance ministries in a number of countries, whatever their income level, from France to Bangladesh, have successfully injected green PFM into their PFM framework. Results have been encouraging with greater awareness throughout the government and an increase in expenditure in the national budget that contribute to achieving climate objectives. Green PFM has also gained momentum on the international agenda through several innovative global initiatives, such as the World Bank, the UNDP and the OECD. The IMF has recently expanded its analytical and capacity development toolkit with a Green PFM framework to help countries in greening their PFM systems. IMF's Green PFM framework provides a holistic view of practices that introduce a climate-friendly perspective into the way public finance are managed. It suggests entry points across PFM, meaning areas of interaction of climate and environmental priorities across and beyond the budget cycle. Let's first look closer to the entry points of climate priorities within the budget cycle. In the budget cycle, strategic planning and fiscal framework is the first stage where governments set the broad policy framework and the overall fiscal constraints for the budget. To ensure that green priorities and concerns are taken on board during this early stage, there are several entry points. For example, climate-related targets and objectives can be incorporated in national and sectoral development plans or strategies. For instance, Indonesia encouraged ministries and subnational governments to integrate a green dimension in their budgeting and planning by highlighting the top policy areas and priority programs for achieving green benefits. The next stage, budget preparation, is crucial for the inclusion of green concerns in the way ministries of finance make decisions on how to allocate resources and what to prioritize. 
For instance, the budget circular, which refers to operational guidelines and targets produced by the Ministry of Finance to frame the budget preparation, is a key instrument to send a clear signal on the importance of climate issues and provide environmental or climate-related instructions to line ministries. In Kenya, budget circulars specify priority interventions for mitigation and adaptation to climate change and provide instructions for reporting on climate-relevant expenditure. Preparing a budget that takes climate change into consideration is an important step, but it is not enough. It is when the budget is executed that plans become reality or not. At the budget execution stage, keeping track of and reporting on climate-related expenditure is an important part of an effective Green PFM system. This can be done through climate budget tracking or tagging. The success of a tagging exercise ultimately rests on the capacity to analyze and classify expenditure in an adequate and reliable manner. In the Philippines, the climate change expenditure tagging lays the foundation for green budgeting. It enables identification and tracking of climate responsive expenditure in the budget and facilitates a discussion on its performance. Finally, during the control and audit stage, it is time to examine, measure, and monitor the efficiency and effectiveness of climate policies. Internally, line ministries and agencies should monitor and assess the climate outputs attached to their budget actions. Externally, this is done by supreme audit institutions, but also parliaments. Many countries, such as New Zealand, Sweden, and the United Kingdom support the implementation and oversight of climate policies by setting up an independent spatial body. The legal framework underpins the budget cycle and plays a key role in embedding climate objectives into PFM and ensuring their enforceability. Adjustment may be needed to countries' legal frameworks to establish rules and procedures for green PFM practices, or provide strong legal foundation for them. Green PFM also suggests interactions with PFM functions across and beyond the budget cycle. Fiscal transparency is one such function. The credibility of climate policies can indeed be strained by ensuring that legislators, markets and citizens have information on climate commitments, targets, costs and outcomes. Given their importance in public service delivery and in construction or infrastructure, it is also critical for central governments to coordinate with state-owned enterprises and with subnational governments to ensure they fully contribute to reaching climate objectives. Now that you have received a test of Green PFM framework, let me emphasize again. The Green PFM framework is applicable to all countries interested in Green PFM reforms, regardless of their income level or capacity. Bangladesh, for example, has implemented concrete practices to integrate climate change objectives into the whole budget cycle. Their climate-responsive PFM starts at the planning phase with a climate change strategy. The integration of green considerations in macrofiscal forecasting, a green budget circular, followed by a climate budget report, a system to track green expenditure in the IT system, and emerging performance audit methodologies.